Hello. This is Robert Messina, and uh, you may have already seen the other video, Who Wrote the Book of James? Uh, since I um, produced that, I have come up with some more arguments, and um, I'm making this next video as Who Wrote the Book of James Revisited? So I'm going to keep most of the other arguments, and I'm going to add a few more. But I'm going to try to keep it the same time length. So let's see if I can do that. <clears throat> uh, the first thing I wanted to knock out, that, I mean, there's an argument of uh, who wrote the book of James, whether it would, was James, his earthly brother, or is it James of Zebedee, or the apostle James? And I've always thought that it was the Apostle James, and many other others out there have always thought that too. But the majority of the comments out there in the commentaries are saying that it was James, his earthly brother. And this is where I got to come in, and I got to say, wait, hold on, where are you getting this from? And one of the arguments is that he died. Now, that argument is going to get thrown out right away because he died... Uh, at, at least 14 years later, and and I'm going to uh, go over, right in, uh, right in the beginning, I'm going to go over how I get that. And to get that, we got to go uh, Galatians 1, 16, to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathen. Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood, neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went unto Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. Then, after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter, and I abode with him fifteen days. But other, other of the apostles saw I none, save James, the Lord's brother. Now, that verse, uh, Galatians 1.19, James, the Lord's brother, is one of the pillars that those outside commentaries use to say, yeah, you see, James, the Lord's brother, earthly brother, was a, an apostle right off the bat three years after, three or four years after Jesus ascended. So I'm confirmed that that's still talking about James of Zebedee. <clears throat> now, the next piece of information comes in the next chapter. So Galatians 2.1 says, then... Fourteen years after, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also. Now, I think that, um, that 14 years after was, was after he became a Christian, not 14 years after the first three years after, which you could take it that way, but I, I, from the context of Acts, which we're going to go to, uh, talking about his visit to Jerusalem 14 years after begins uh, at the end of Acts 11, and it concludes at the end of Acts 12. So, and in between, and Acts 12 is mostly talking about the death of James, but it concludes with Paul returning, all right? So, Paul going begins at the end of Acts 11, and that has to do with um, uh, 28, 11, 28. And there stood up one among them named Agabus, he's a prophet, and signified by the Spirit that there should be a great dearth throughout the, all the world, which, did, which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. So that famine, that he's, the dearth and famine, the same thing, um, that occurred in... Uh, in Claudius Caesar's time, it happened in Judea, Judea in 45 A.D. The disciples are aware of it ahead of time, and they believe the prophet, and they send uh, relief unto the brethren which dwell in Judea, which also they did, and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. So there's the, now he, uh, Paul is being sent to, from Antioch to help uh, the saints out in Judea, okay? That's the end of Acts 11, and now let's go to Acts 12. 
he says, now about that time, so it's the t same time frame, which is four, about 14 years after Jesus ascended. Now about that time, Herod the king, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. Right, so right there, he's killed. He's dead. They killed him. So James of Zebedee is killed, and he had plenty of time to write the book of James, which he probably did in only one day. Well, I don't know when he wrote the book, but he had plenty of time to write the book. And then he uh, takes Peter and he throws him into prison. And when Peter gets out of prison, in verse 17, he says, And go show these things unto James and to the brethren. So now, James of Zebedee is dead. And he just says here, show these things to James and the brethren. Now, again, they're saying that that James is James' earthly brother. I'm saying... There's a James of Alphaeus. In the list, you have to distinguish James and John, James and the, his brother John. That distinguishes them, sons of Zebedee, sons of thunder, from uh, James of Alphaeus. But now, if there's only one James in the list, do you really have to say James of Alphaeus anymore? So when he says, go show these things unto James, there's only one James left. Now... <clears throat> To say that that James is, is James, his, his earthly brother, means that you're not respecting the, the office of the apostle because James, his earthly brother, is not an apostle. And they try to say that too. They try to say, yes, he's an apostle because of that other verse where it says, uh, I saw no other apostle except James, his bro brother of the Lord. So I'm going to get to that verse. So that verse is giving them rights to say he's, that James wasn't an apostle. He's not an apostle. James of Alphaeus was an apostle. And I think that that James that they're talking about right there, Acts 12, 17, Peter says, go tell James, is James of Alphaeus. And it's the same James in 15, which is, which is later, which is after this as well, Acts 15, they call it the Council of Jerusalem. At this council, first Peter addresses them, and after they he held their peace, James stands up and answers and says, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. Dot, 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 which from among Gentiles are turned to God, but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols, from fornication, from things strangled, and from blood. So you see, you see, you see, uh, <clears throat> the giving of the law to the Gentiles is is shrunken down. The verbal law to the Gentiles is shrunken down to abstaining from the pollutions of idols, so idolatry, uh, and from uh, fornication, a big thing, and from things strangled and from blood. So those last two. So the main thing is to keep away from idolatry and from fornication because... Uh, in this day and age, they they we trust that they don't strangle the animals and and um, and they drain the blood, okay? But if they don't, but there are there are customs of of uh, like Scottish blood pudding, for example. I mean that would be verbally that verbally you got to stay away from it. <clears throat> okay, so uh, I mentioned this because. This is, an, this is an important decision being made by both Peter and James. And, the, and James of Zebedee is already gone. And I think that this is also done by an apostle, and it's done by James of Alphaeus. Okay? And, that, and that's, that brings me to the next thing in the sense that the reason why these guys, go, these guys wander is because they don't have the respect of the prof of the uh, apostleship house. Remember, uh, Paul said, um, "Paul, an apostle, as as Paul, an apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify my office." And he mag had to magnify his office because his office was disregarded 
They was there were men out there. He, Paul was saying one thing, and they were saying another thing, and they were disregarding the fact that he was an apostle. Uh, first, first Corinthians uh, twelve twenty eight, and God had set some in the church, first apostles, second a prophets, third teachers, after that miracles, etc. And that's also in Ephesians 4. That's twice that's mentioned that the church has a, has a hierarchy of, of um, leadership. And the top leadership is apostles. And of the apostles, yes, yes, uh, Barnabas became an apostle and because it means sent one. And he sent with, the, with a message with a letter, like you hear, apostle, epistle. They're very, they're similar because they both have to do with a letter that is sent out, message that is sent out. The good news in this case, okay? So God, um, God doesn't hand, doesn't allow his good news to be sent out by anybody. He, ha he sends them out, he disciples them first. Jesus came to disciple his 12 apostles. And there were others around, and I think Barnabas was there. M Matthias, the 12th apostle after Judas, he was there too. And that was a requirement that before they chose him, it was a requirement that was he was going to be there right from the beginning until this day now when they're choosing. Somebody that was always with them right from the beginning. And Matthias fit that bill. Now, his earthly brother didn't fit that bill. His earthly brother was a, was a disbeliever. Um, but again, they disregard uh, the office of apostleship. And it's, it's not something that comes easy. It didn't come easy. They had to leave their nets and follow him. They had to leave what they were doing and follow him for a couple of years. And... Uh, at the end of that time, all that time, they still had, they still were empty in belief. They did, they didn't, they, they were still, they still needed the Holy Spirit, which came after Jesus left. But they got that, they got that Holy Spirit, and then they became even stronger. And the picture, the, the picture of feeding the people, when, the, when um, Jesus fed five thousand, he gave his, he broke, he blessed the bread, he broke the bread. And he gave the broken bread to his apostles, and they went and they fed the people. Okay? So that's the picture. He gives it to them, and they give it to the rest of the world. The picture of, uh, on the, on the, in Solomon's temple, there was a brazen laver filled with water, and it was used in the ritual of the priest. Uh, that water was used in the w w washing rituals. Um, but but um, Solomon, being a little fancy, uh, had a bit that big brass laver sit upon twelve oxen, uh, which is a beast of burden. Okay, and the picture is that they're in a circle, and the idea is is that they are sent to all four corners of the earth with the message of the gospel and the, the labor, the water has to do with be baptizing them. So they were given the job of, of taking the message and going out and baptizing the world of whoever became a believer. See? So that's the picture. The picture is the 12 are the ones. And it's a 12 is a governing factor. There's 12 hours in a day. There's 12 moons in, the, in a year. It's a governing factor, and sometimes it's thirteen. So one out of, born out of due time, the thirteenth, because every three, just about every three years is a thirteenth moon, and then and then you can you can uh, rubber stamp, rubber stamp the apostleship to another person like like Barnabas was, and then later on Silas. So I think Silas was an apostle as well. And when, he, when I say he's an apostle, I mean he's gifted man, fully gifted to do all the things that they have to do, including the miracles. Now, there's the fourth in the church is a worker of miracles. The second is the prophets. And the third is 
the teachers and those apostles had all of those gifts. They fulfilled all of those, those functions. See? They were heavily endowed with, with the gifts of God. <clears throat> the burden of that big, heavy labor of, uh, sea of water was pretty heavy. They need to be strong. They need to be very strong. And they weren't strong in their flesh. They were strong in the spirit. They were just like Jesus who could have, who did it all. He rose from the dead. He, he healed. He, he called people that were dead back to life. Okay? He was, he was endowed, heavily endowed with the strength of God Almighty. But is, isn't this the carpenter's son? See, he didn't really exalt himself like that. They didn't even realize it. Let's conclude with that thought, Ephesians 2, and, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets and Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. And now, the next thought about, you know, going from true apostles, we'll go to the topic of false apostles and false teachers. Now, um, Peter says, but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. Second Peter 2, 1. And then in Second Corinthians 11, he's, he's talking about, but such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. See? So at this time, there are men prancing about as apostles in their own flesh, in their own name, without God really giving them that stamp of approval. What does it say in Revelation 2, 2? I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil and how thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and, are, and hast found them liars. You see? So those outside sources that, are declared, that have declared James to be an apostle, James the earthly brother to be an apostle, have to go through the scrutiny of the Holy Spirit just because you say you're an apostle, just because you have a gathering that says you're an apostle, that doesn't mean anything. You have to be tested. And as far as the test goes with me, with this guy who's in the past, there's no mention of him being an apostle at all in the Bible. I have to, you have to go to the outside source that say, he's what, say he was. And they give you arguments that, are, that, that can be refuted. And they give you pretty simp sick arguments, and they disregard what is written about James, his earthly brother. By name, he's only mentioned when they talk about, hey, there's your mother and your brothers, and, uh, and then they list them. And his brethren, James and Jose and Simon and Judas. So he's got four brothers named James and Joseph and Simon and Judas. And his sisters, are they not all with us? Whence, had, whence then has this man all these things? So, and they were offended in him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor. A prophet is not without honor. A prophet's honorable. Except in his own country and in his own house. And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Because of their unbelief. He did not many mighty works there. Now, uh, the, uh, part of the comment on, on James's earthly brother, he saw all the works he did. Well, according to this, he, he, he didn't see too many works because he couldn't do mighty works because they didn't believe him. And in James 7, it's recorded that Jesus didn't want to go to uh, Jerusalem uh, to the feast, to the tabernacle feast, because of which, which by law, by law he has, he had to go, um, and he did go, but he didn't go want to go yet. And his his brothers, and it says that they did not believe him. They did not believe in him. So James, his earthly brother, doesn't believe in him, and he's probably the chief guy saying hey, why don't you go to Jerusalem? And, and he didn't go because they want to kill him. 
the Jews in Jerusalem want to kill him. And, and he's pushing him, why don't you go? Does that sound like he loves the Lord? Now, James, in, in the epistle of James, he says, he says, he will save those who love him. He's one of the few people that said it like that. But this doesn't look like love to me because I, I'm sure they knew that he wanted, they were going, wanted to kill him. They knew that, but, and Jesus knew that too. And Jesus did go. And, and, and there was a time at that feast that he openly spoke about him. And he knew that his time wasn't ready yet. But part of, part of uh, knowing that your time isn't ready yet is not, and not just because you know that your time isn't ready yet, you shouldn't, he, shouldn't, he didn't want to just go out there, yeah, it's me, it's me. Because he says, yeah, it's me at another time. And then he tells them, now this is another part, you know, in, in 4 he says, If thou do these things, show thyself to the world. For neither did his brethren believe in him. Right there, that's where it says it. Then Jesus said unto, the, unto them, My time is not yet come, but your time is always ready. The time, when he talks about the time is not yet come, it's the time for him to die was not yet. But their time is always ready. Now, if if Jesus knew the future, and he, do, he do, does know the future, and Jesus, if Jesus knew the calling of his own dis apostles, would he have said that to, to, the, to his brother James? If James was going to be his apostle later on, he was going to have this big, it's just like Paul, a big change, going from unbelief to a full knowledge of God later on, would he have told him that your time is always ready? No, because he... His time wasn't going to be ready until it was ready, until he was fulfilled his will. Because he would have been in his will, and his will has a certain time. When you're in God's will, you have a certain time that you're going to be ready to, to die. If you're going to fulfill the, the things that he wants you to fulfill in this world. And then he says, the world cannot hate you, but it hates me. See, the world can't hate them because they're, they're with the world. So his apostle is with the world why doesn't he make him an apostle right from the get-go if he's going to make an apostle he wants to teach him the things when 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 does james his earthly brother learn all the things of the spirit all the all the things that his disciples were taught that for for a few years and all the experience and all the sending out uh he sent them out by by first he sends them out by 12. Then he sends them out by 70. When, when is the, he going to get to send out the experience? Why would he do it like that? I mean, he did, he did do it like that with Paul. Okay, there's your, there's your argument. But Paul, the salvation of Paul is described in the Bible. The, the salvation of his earthly brother is not described anywhere in the Bible. You have to go to outside sources, and I don't believe outside sources too much. Uh, well, it's not like, you know, an outside source. Because it's an outside source, it's wrong. It's because it's an outside source, it may be wrong, right and it may be wrong. But the Bible I know is right. So I know Paul became an apostle and he was not discipled. And he had three years of discipleship in the spirit in Arabia. Okay, to finish up about the behold your mother and your brethren... Uh, Mark 3, and he answered them saying, uh, Who is my mother or my brethren? Now this is the earthly mother, earthly brethren. And he, and he looked round, uh, round about on them which, which sat about him. So there was a group around him that were learning of him. Okay? His mother and his brothers are coming in that direction. But there's a group around him that's been there. Okay? There are people learning of him. And he looks around about on them, which sat about them, and he said, Behold, my mother and my brethren, for whosoever shall do the will of God, the same is my brother and my sister and my mother. So there's the distinction. A brother in the flesh doesn't mean anything. As far as him being his brother goes, who 
He's also his father, in a sense, because every single atom in that, in, in that man's body was created. There was not one thing that was created that wasn't created by the father and the son, the word. There was one, not one thing. So when they breathed into his nostrils, the living soul, Jesus was there. He was, more, he was a lot more than a bro earthly bro brother to him. He was, he was his father, in a sense, in that sense. He was made by him, but he made, he made a lot of people. Many are picked, but few are chosen. See, this, right here he's saying, look, look, you know, I know who my mother and my brother are, and brethren are. They're, 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 they're sitting right around here. Because there was probably a, a woman that was about his mother's age, and he was thinking of her as his mother. Like he was treating her and talking to her as if he was his own, her, his own mother. And he was talking to his other to, to people that were his brother's age like they were his brothers. But that, bro that other brother wasn't sitting by him. But yeah, again, you're going to tell me that yeah, it happened later. Well, it could have happened later to any James that there were thousands of James that, at that time. It could have happened to any James. Let's confuse the issue a little more. Now, I'm going to move on now to where they point out that uh, after Jesus rose, he, he saw James and then all of the apostles. There's a statement made in 1 Corinthians, and they, they point to that and they say, look, here it is. First, first he talks to James, and then he talks to all the apostles, okay? Okay, that was in uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 8. After that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. And last of all, he was seen of me also as one born out of due time. Okay, so that's where they say, okay, you see, there it is. He sees James, and then he sees all the apostles. So they interject that James is James' his earthly brother. Uh, okay, now who do I think that James is? I think that's James of Zebedee. I, it still reads correctly. After that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles, all the rest of them, including himself. Why, why can't they read it like that? Why can't they read it like, after that, he was seen of James, and then all the rest of the apostles? You can even say, and then all the apostles, including James. Okay, that's number one. Number two, by their same logic, by that same logic, he says, and, and that he was seen of... Kephas, then of the twelve, after that he was seen of about five hundred brethren at once. By that same logic, he was seen of Cephas, and then of the twelve. Oh, wait a minute. You, so now there's another, so Kephas is now another guy. He's not, because he just, Peter is, Peter is of the twelve, and, and Kephas is somebody else. Peter, Kephas means stone in Hebrew. So that's somebody else? No, that's Peter. He's seen of Peter and then of the twelve. So it's the same exact logic. You, you, so you can't have it both ways. Both are correct. He sees Peter all by himself, and then he sees the, 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 the rest of the twelve. And, and, and I want to even hone in even further on the chronology of, the, of these visits. If you look at Luke 24, 33 through 36. Now this is... Um, on the day Jesus rose from the dead, uh, he walked with uh, two men on the way to Emmaus. And uh, Luke 24, 33, And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and them that were with him. Okay? So he finds eleven. Notice it's eleven. I say that, notice it's 11, because um, Thomas is not there. Judas isn't there either, but I believe Matthias is there. So that's the way I'm seeing this. I'm not going to make a big deal about it, but Thomas is not there. And I get that because when you go into John, John says there were three times that the Lord appeared after he was, after he was risen and before he rose up into to heaven three times now this is the first time the first time is in Jerusalem okay uh, and he sees 
out of the, the apostles, he sees first he sees Ma Mary Magdalene first, and um, and he sees Peter second, and I think then he sees the men uh, uh, are walking on to Emmaus, and then the, those men come to Jerusalem to tell the apostles, and the disciples tell those two, the Lord is risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. That matches up with 1 Corinthians 15, 5, that he was seen of Cephas. And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them. Now, I say, I'm saying that Thomas is not there because in John 20, 24, talks about this, this time. But 20, 24 says, But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. See? So then there's the second time Jesus appeared. And that's in Galilee. In John, it says that uh, Thomas sees him eight days later. And I believe that's the time that uh, Jesus appears in Galilee, as recorded in Math Matthew 28, 10. Then Jesus said, un said unto them, Be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there they shall see me. So there's another vis uh, visitation in Galilee and I believe that Thomas is there at that time. And to match up then of the 12 in 1 Corinthians 15, after the, and then of the 12, after that he was seen of about 500 brethren at once. So, at, so the second time he sees the 12 and he sees the 500 brethren. So that 500 brethren is including... Um, um, Matthias, who was later on uh, chosen to be the twelfth apostle, and uh, so that's why they can officially say there then of the twelve, and um, he, uh, Thomas was there too. So again, it's twelve. So okay, so that's the second time, and then the third time to match up with with Paul is was Paul saying in fifteen. He says after that he was seen of James then of all the apostles, and last of all, he was seen of me. So that's the third time, and it's right, and it's the end of uh, the Gospel of John uh, when he talks about them uh, fishing and, uh, and getting the fish and um, eating the fish and all of that. Um, uh, that but that does not specifically describe uh, him singling out James first and then appearing to the rest of the disciples. But, you know, sometimes you only get one reference to that, like the reference of him seeing Peter first and then the rest of the apostles is recorded uh, twice. But this, is, this singling out James is only recorded once, and it's James of Zebedee. And why do I keep saying it's James of Zebedee? It's like I said in the first video, Jesus had three mighty ones around him. David had three mighty, three mighty ones around him. And it talks about how, how many men they killed at once. And, and uh, I don't want to make this too long. But he also had 30 mighty ones around him. And of the 30, he had three mighty ones of the 30. So he had three mighty ones, he had 30 mighty ones, and he had three mighties of the 30. So this is not something new that they do. The king is surrounded by his mighty warriors. And his three mighty warriors are Peter, James, and John. Peter, James, and John are there when he raises the, the, the daughter of the synagogue ruler. Peter, James, and John are there when he um, goes to the Mount of Transfiguration. Peter, James, and John are there when... Um, he goes to pray, you know, the heavy prayer that he has. And they go to sleep. His mighty ones go to sleep. And his three mighty ones are set up as pillars of the church. Peter, James, and John. Galatians 2, 9. And when James, Kephas, again Peter, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived by, by the grace that was given unto me, that they gave to me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship, that we should go unto the heathen, and they unto the circumcision. So, so there it is. There, there's Peter, James, and John 
are the pillars of the church and they are sent to the circumcision or to uh, Israel. And what is the first thing uh, the letter of James says? I, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, first thing he says, I'm a servant, and that's going to come into play too in my arguments. And second, uh, he's writing to the 12 tribes that are scattered abroad, and that's Israel. That's the circumcision. He's set, he's sent to the circumcision, okay? And there it is, right there, James, Peter, and John. And at that time, James is still alive. He said, right, he, at this time, he is not much longer that he's going to be going to die because the sec, this is the second time Paul came to Jerusalem and it's, and it's the t about the time that, he's de that he is killed. So he does meet, meet James again, James, Peter, and he, may, he meets them and um, then he returns and he doesn't see them anymore. So there we have, we have the three mighty ones and um, who, wrote, who wrote the letters? John, well, John wrote letters. Peter wrote letters. So James doesn't write a letter? Well, he's one of the three might. He doesn't write a letter? We got to wait till his earthly brother becomes a Christian and gets uh, all kinds of inspiration so that he supersedes James the uh, of Alphaeus. Come on. Why don't you just wake up? Okay, now there, there are other things um, with, Ju with Judas, the brother of James. Because, because to make things even murkier, Judas, uh, the writer of the book of Jude, has a brother called James. So these guys are saying that his brother Judas wrote that book. Again, again, lack of respect for the apostleship. Lack of respect and disregarding the verse that says, my brethren are these, they'll do the will of God. I, mean, I don't have respect to a person just because he's born in the same mother. That is not something that I'm, I'm going to uh, take into account. I look at the heart. And what, is, what was his heart? His heart was to go to Jerusalem, get killed. Now, why is there this, this en en enmity between the two of them? Why? I think one part of it Part of that enmity is from the curse that God had laid upon David after he sinned that, that there was going to be a sword in his house. In gener all his generations, there was going to be that sword. And that's, that's, this is the house of David here. And who is, going to be, who is in line to be the next king, according to the flesh? Who's going to be in line to the next king? If Joseph, the father Joseph, is in line to be of the kings, who's the next one? Who's his father? Who's his son? Who's physically his son? James. The James they're talking about that becomes an apostle. Okay, so so you get the rivalry of who wants to be king here? Yeah, you do. I don't even I don't even know. I know Jesus know, is aware of it, but I don't know if you, if, if that man James was aware of it. But he was part of that curse with the sword in the house, in his own house. Now, I, I remember I told you I was going to uh, get back to James, the Lord's brother, and in order for me to get back to that, I first have to talk about who was the disciple whom Jesus loved. This is another controversial topic that I'm one of the few that disagree with mainstream because because I was in mainstream be believing that it was John who was the disciple whom he loved and he wrote in the third person because he was you know he was saying it a little differently he was outside looking at you know and so he didn't want to mention his specifically mention his name because it was himself I think he didn't want to specifically mention his name because it was his brother and I'm, I'm going to go through a bunch of things, and hopefully uh, you get to see what I'm saying. Uh, one of the times he mentions the disciple who he loves when he's on the cross. When he's on the cross, his mother shows up, and the disciple whom he loves shows up. And when he sees them, he says to his mother, Mother, behold your son. 
And he says to the, that disciple, behold your mother. Okay, so now, now he is fusing, he is changing who, his, who that disciple's mother is. It's no longer the mother of Je Je uh, Zebedee's children. Even if you think it's John, it's no, no longer the mother of Je Zebedee's children. His mother is the mother that Jesus is Mary, the mother of Jesus now. Okay? Officially, where something where you cannot say it isn't so, something where, where that is his mother, period. You know, and, and from that time, that disciple took her to his own. Okay? Um, some think that that guy was Lazarus. Um, and, and Jesus did love Lazarus, and he, Lazarus was probably uh, discipled, uh, at least learned a lot of him. Um, but it talks about the Last Supper, the Twelve were having that Last Supper. It specifically says the Twelve sat to eat. And one leaned on his breast, and that was the disciple whom Jesus loved. All right? So it couldn't have been Lazarus. I don't know where that guy, how come that guy didn't see that, but the, the, main, the main proof I have that it is um, uh, James of Zebedee that was leaning on his, on his chest was um, after Jesus dies before the day of Pentecost, there were three times when uh, women named Mary are mentioned. And um, once when... Once when uh, they're at the cross and they're, they're looking from, from, they're looking at it from a distance. And um, so Matthew, that's Matthew 27, 55 and 56. Now it says, among, among which was Mary Magdalene. Now notice Mary Magdalene is spoken of first. And Mary Magdalene was seen of Jesus first person ever after he's, when he's alive again. And she is, every single time they mention, they mention Mary, it's Mary of Magdalene first. So, I mean, I think that there's a reason for that. John doesn't even mention Mary, his mother. Not even mentioned. And when, and when Jesus sees his mother, uh, he says, my mother, and he, and he makes a distinction. It does say, Mary, the mother of Jesus... Was, was there at the time of the day of Pentecost when the Spirit was going to be given to everybody, to the 120. And so she was amongst them. And it says, and his brethren. Now, and his brethren could be anything. So whether or not his brother James was in there or not, I don't, you have to, you have to get, you have to speculate. You don't know. But it does say Mary, the mother of Jesus. So uh, for sure... She's at the day of Pentecost, and, and, and she is a woman of God. But Mary Magdalene seems to have preeminence over her. I know Catholics aren't going to like that, like me pointing that out. But anyway, um, so Mary Ma Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Josie, and, Ma and the mother of Zebedee's children. So uh, it's, she's not mentioned here. As Mary, mother of Jesus, and I think she is. She is there. I mean, she was at the cross, so she was there at the time. Now they're looking from afar. Or with with now she's in the group that will look with other women that are looking from afar. But she's not called Mary, the mother of Jesus. She's called Mary, the mother of James and Josie. Now Josie, Josie was one of Jesus' brothers, and so was James, one of his Jesus' brothers. So it was. Judas, and so was Simon, though they're not mentioned. And, and I accept that. But that James right there, I don't think it's his earthly brother James. And I say that because uh, Jesus just got finished saying that, woman, behold your son. So now, whoever that disciple was, she was now going to be Mary, the mother of that disciple. See? I'm getting that? And I think... The disciple whom Jesus loved was James of Zebedee. And that's why it says it like that. Now, if it was John who uh, Jesus loved, it would have said Mary, the mother of John. And if that disciple who he loved was Bartholomew, it would have said 
Mary, the mother of Bartholomew. And then when it got to Mary, the mother of Zebedee's children, if it was Bartholomew, it would have said the mother of James and John. But it says the mother of Zebedee's children as if she's not the mother of James anymore. So they don't say it mother of James and John. They say it mother of Zebedee's children. This is not adorning the graves. This is just them being there when, when they're buried. It says Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. Now he just, this is still chapter 27. This is a few verses down. He already said Mary, mother of James and Joseph. So now he's saying the other Mary. Notice, notice the other Mary. Again, not, not so much pr prominence. Sitting over against the sepulchre. So they're, they're at the gravesite. Uh, and Mark talks about, about them looking afar off in 1540. This, is this, this matches uh, 55 and 56 of Matthew 27. Ma Mark 1540. There were also women looking af on afar off, among whom was Mary Magdalene, he says it first too, and Mary, the mother of James the less, and of Joseph and Salome. So, so that definitely matches, see, the mother of James the less and of Joseph. So Joseph is mentioned. So it's the same Mary that Matthew mentions. And it's, it's a James. This, but we add James the less. Now, I'm going to get to that. They say that James the less... Uh, they they screw up on that James the less as well. That's again that's James of Zebedee, and I'll get to it. Why? And Joseph and Salome. Now Salome was I'm guessing it was one of Jesus' sis, earthly sisters. Okay, because this is, this is the only time she's mentioned. Now now we're gonna go to uh, the end of the Sabbath, and they go the women go to adorn the graves, and again you would expect. Mary, his mother, to be there. So uh, it says in the Matthew 28, 1, In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn, towards the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. Uh, just in 27 there, he called her the other Mary. And when he mentioned her, she was the mother of James and Josie. And Mark says, uh, to, to match this, and when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene first, and Mary, uh, the mother of his italics, of James and Salome. This time, he doesn't mention Josie, okay? And he doesn't say it, James the less, okay? So, but he just, you know, but he already called him James the less and Salome, okay? Now, Luke talks about it. <laughs> It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna. Now, she was healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Luke 8, 2, 3. And Mary, the mother of James. So he calls her mother of James, mother in, in italics, and Mary of James and other women that were with them, which told these things about, about the empty tombs unto the disciples, unto the apostles. So you see here... Uh, again, she's called Mary of James. This time, no mention of Josie, no mention of Salome, M Mary of James, okay? So there is a Mary that goes, that is at the cross, looking from afar off, and at the gravesite, and adorning the gravesite, called Mary of James, She's not called Mary of Jesus. She's called Mary of James. Why? Because Jesus pronounced her to have a son, an apostle that he loved, who was, who was one of the twelve because he's leaning on his breast at the Last Supper. Now, John talks about this. 20, the first day of the week comes Mary Magdalene. The only mentions Mary Magdalene. When it was yet dark, unto the sepulchre, and sees the stone taken away. But Acts, again, Acts 1, 13, 14, she's called by Luke, Mary, the mother of Jesus. When he was crucified, 
the women were mentioned, and the Mary that is mentioned is the Mary of James. And again, disciple, this is your mother. Mother, this is your son. So now she's Mary of whoever's name that disciple was. Before, first and foremost, before any of her other sons. Why? Because the king of the universe said it. The king of creation said it. So it has to be. You can't, you can't get around that one. She's also the mother of her other children. And so that's why Josie is mentioned and Salome is mentioned. But James isn't mentioned, neither is uh, Judas, neither is Simon. Okay? So just because the other James isn't mentioned doesn't mean he's not born of her. Now, again, the same, the same situation. They're at the, Jesus is about to die, and he's about to tell his mother, he, I want you to be the mother of this man, and I want this man to be your, to be your son. And why is, he, why is he doing that? And I think he's doing that because he's fulfilling honor thy m father and mother. I think his father was, had passed away already and that um, somebody had to take care of his mother. And the thing about what I'm bringing out is, is why doesn't he allow James, his earthly brother, to take care of his mother? That would be, he's a, he's a grown man. He could do it. Why doesn't he allow him? He doesn't want him. I have come not to bring peace but a sword, dividing father against son, mother against daughter, and guess what? A brother against brother which is not something that's new in the history of the saints, the complete history, going back to, to Genesis. Right off the bat, you have Cain and Abel. You had uh, the, the brothers against Joseph. They were, wanted to kill him. First, they wanted to kill him. And Jude, Judas says, um, no, let's, let's, uh, let's not kill him. Let's sell him. So they sell him. And, 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 and he, come, he goes in the pit. He comes out of the pit, and he's sold into slavery. What is that a picture of? In the pit and out of the pit is resurrection, sold into slavery, and later, he, first he's sold into slavery, and then he is exalted, okay? Uh, again, those are images of, those are shadows of what is to become in the life of Jesus. And then you have Jacob and Esau. Were they, were they nice to each other? Jacob and Esau. I think Jacob Jacob liked his brother, but Esau certainly didn't like his brother. He wanted to kill him. James, the earthly brother, wanted him to go to the feast. The Jews were there, and they wanted to kill him. There was a rivalry here. This is the sword that's dividing the household. This is the house of David, which is, pro which is prophesied that it's going to have the sword in the house. The two kings want to be king. Jesus already was king. I mean, what can he do about it? You know, his, this little guy here wants to be king too. But he doesn't allow, he doesn't want his mother to be taken care of his brother, by his brother. That's the point. He specifically changes it. And once he changes it, it's changed. So now from now on, they can't say, Mary, the mother of James' earthly brother, well, they could still say that. They could still say that. But they first and foremost got to say the first in charge was the disciple whom he loves who was just ordained to be the son of his mother. She's the first mentioned. And there are a couple of times that she's the, he's the only one mentioned. James is the only one mentioned. Okay, so that's that. That's one of the reasons why I think James is the uh, disciple whom he loved. So, so again, again, back to now, back to uh, when Paul goes to Jerusalem the first time, he sees Peter, and the only other disciple he apostle he sees is uh, James, the Lord's brother. So that's why he's called James, the Lord's brother. Because they both had the same mother. See? They both have the same mother. 
Uh, so does James, uh, the earthly brother, had the same mother. But if he was, if James was a disciple whom he loved, he would be the, he would be also the Lord's brother. And um, another one is um, this this title, James the Less. So what do we know about what do we know about James of Zebedee? Besides, he's son of thunder and and he was one of the three mighty, and he was an apostle, and he was sent out to, to preach the gospel. He was sent out. Well, he tarried till he came, actually, because the disciple who he loved tarried until he came. And, J- and, and John says, now it is, n- they were saying that he wasn't going to die until Jesus came, but he's, Jesus didn't say that. He says, what is it to you if he ca- tarries till he comes? As if at the time... John knew that that disciple whom he loved was going to die because he already died. So he's clarifying what people thought and what really is because he knows for sure. See? Uh, Back to James the Less. Now, again, what do we know about Zebedee's children? So Matthew 20, 20 and 21, Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children, Again, she's still mentioned as Zebedee's children. I know this is this is before he died, but this is also written after he died. And she said unto him, "Grant that these two, these my two sons, may sit the one on thy right hand and the other on thy left in thy kingdom." So th- Jesus says, Jesus answers that with, you know not what you ask. Are you able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of and to be baptized with the baptiz- baptism I am baptized with? And they answered that with, we are able. So now his cup is to allow himself to be killed. James was allowed, James was um and he was uh, baptized into death. And now we're all baptized into death, by the way. They answer, we are able. And um, we are able. And, and they, so, after, so they agree, and they, he says, well, you, you shall indeed drink of my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with, but to sit on the, my right hand and my left is not mine to give, but shall be given uh, to them for whom it is prepared of my father. And then the ten heard it, and they were moved with indignation against the two brethren. But Jesus called uh, them unto him and said, Ye know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, and they that are great exercise authority upon them. But it shall, it shall not be so amongst you. But whosoever shall be great among you, let him be your minister." And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Remember, James of Zebedee was killed by the sword. His life was taken. So he was similar to him like that. And again, he starts off with James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. So he's the one who says, let the one of low degree rejoice in that he's exalted. So he was teaching that, and he was doing it himself because he was of low degree. He wanted to sit at his right hand. He wanted to be great in the kingdom. He wanted to be a minister. He wanted, wanted, wanted to sit by Jesus. He loved Jesus. When, when James talks about salvation, how does he say it? He's the only one that's, that I know that says it like this. So verse 9, let me, again, verse 9. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. He's teaching it there. He's doing it as well. And notice, let the brother of low degree. So James the less. He's a man of low degree. He's a minister. He's a servant. He's humble. He's the least. He's the least is great. Means he's great. He wants that position. He wants to sit next to him. He's competing for that spot. He wants that glory to be next to him. Okay, so how does uh, how does James 
in the in the epistle of James, how does he express salvation? And he's the really the only one that um, speaks of it this way that I noticed. Blessed is the man that endures temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. So the crown of life is salvation. It's salvation, which the Lord has promised to them that love him. See? So he loved Jesus, and Jesus loved him. Hearken, my brethren, hath not God, he says it again, hearken, my brethren, God has, not, has not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, that's salvation, heirs of the kingdom, which he has promised to them that love him. So he loves Jesus, and Jesus loves him. That's the way disciples are. They love Jesus. What can separate me from the love of Christ? There's another apostle that's, that's ministering and serving and, and doing. Paul, who loves, you, you know Paul loves Jesus, and Jesus loves him. And um, talking about sacrifice, because James was sacrificed, that gave Jesus even more reason to, to love James because he knew he was going to be sacrificed. Maybe that's why he let, let the burden, you know, he didn't give him a big burden, just tarry till I come. I mean, he gave him the burden of, of taking care of his mother and tarrying till he comes. I, uh, you know, take, as far as taking care of his mother, you know, 14 years after Jesus, if she was 55, then it's about, she's about 70 years old. Could have been that, that she had, after, right after she died, then he allowed he took that. He took the, the last. You know, he did what he wanted him to do. Besides, write the letter. Besides, be a pillar of the church. Besides, listen. You can see from this letter that James is not sit, sitting there tarrying. Okay, he's ministering, and he's ministering unto the Jew first. He was sent to the Jew first. Okay, so um, there's another reason. Now, um, when Jesus talks about Fear not them that kill the body. So he's talking to, he could be talking to James when he says that. Fear not them that kill the body, but fear him who can take, can kill your body and throw your soul into hell. And right after that, he talks about the love of God has upon the sparrow. Two sparrows are sold for a farthing. And those are, you know, when they go into the, you know, to make sacrifices, animal sacrifices. A sparrow is the animal that obviously was sacrificed. And when he was, when when that sparrow falls to the ground, the Father in heaven sees it, and he's concerned, and he ha and he has a heart for that sparrow. And if he has a heart for the sparrow that's going through all of that, how much more is he for going, gonna go through that for you? You are worth more than the sparrow. And he's telling that to James and to all of us. Yeah, he was a disciple whom Jesus loved. I, I, I'm positive it's James. So going over this, when Paul goes to Jerusalem after three years, uh, you know, the first time he sees Peter and James, the Lord's brother, you can see how it fits that that's James of Zebedee. When um, Peter, F, when Peter uh, is imprisoned and he comes out of prison and he says, "Go tell James," and James of Zebedee was already killed, respecting the office of apostle, that's James of uh, Alphaeus. Okay, and in the uh, in the Council of Jerusalem, Acts fifteen, that's James of Alphaeus. James took over James, and Jude, the brother of James, is the brother of James of Alphaeus. Now, when the apostles are listed, James of Alphaeus is, is listed first, and right after that, it comes, they, they right after him in, Ma in Matthew and Mark, they say James of Alphaeus and then Thaddeus or Labaius. okay? So he's got two other names. Judas has two other names. And when Jude writes... The apostle, again, office of an apostle writing, the, writing a message 
of salvation to feed the people, it's going to come from the apostles first, one of the twelve, the Judas, the Judas that is listed amongst the apostles, who's also called Thaddeus, uh, um, courageous, and Labaius, large-hearted. That Jude is the brother of James, and that brother is James of Alphaeus. Okay, so James of Alphaeus takes over after James of Zebedee is is martyred, and that's respecting the office of apostleship, first apostle, then prophet, then teachers, then, then, then. See, that's said twice, that hierarchy is said twice. Apostles are listed in the building of the foundation. Apostles are symbolized on the Temple of Solomon to go and spread the gospel onto all the earth. Let's not disrespect that office. And any, anything they say about what happened, the belief in it, the faith of his brother James, his earthly brother James, is speculation. And there are false prophets and false teachers. And even if he was a, uh, proclaimed to be a, an apostle, that would have to be tested. And there's, there uh, is an apostle, Paul, who was not amongst the twelve, who became an apostle after Jesus had risen. Yes, but that's fully described and documented in the Bible. So when they say James, the brother of Jesus, earthly brother of Jesus, wrote the book of James, let it go in one year, ear and out the other, because that's what I do with it. I shrug it off. Okay. Because I can't, this, you know, this, all of the proof, you don't really have time to prove it, to, to prove it, you know. And as a matter of fact, there is one thing as far as the trying of the apostle. Let's, let's take a look at, at one of the, um, okay, one of those outside sources that are, again, not included in the Bible, not included in letters, just outside sources, again, as there were false prophets in times past, there shall be false teachers amongst you, and therefore there's going to be false doctrine amongst you, and the, uh, and the apostles, false apostles, are going to bring about false doctrine. Um, now I'm getting this from the manner, uh, this is a, uh, I don't know exactly where, but the manner of Jesus' death has been already indicated by the above quoted words of Clement, who records that he was thrown from the pinnacle of the temple and was beaten to death with a club. But Heg Hegesippus, who lived immediately after the apostles, gives the most accurate account in the fifth, in the fifth book of his memoirs. He writes as follows, James, the brother of the Lord, succeeded to the government of the church in conjunction with the apostles. He has been called the just by all from the time of our Savior to the present day. For there were many that bore the name of James. He, and here it is. He was holy from his mother's womb, and he drank no wine nor strong drink like John the Baptist, nor did he eat flesh. He didn't eat. He was a vegetarian, like John the Baptist, who ate um, honey and uh, locusts. No razor came, like John the Baptist. No, nor did he an anoint himself with oil, and he did not use the bath. I don't know what that was. He alone was permitted to enter into the holy place, for he wore not woolen but linen garments. So he was he was uh, Levite, and he was in the habit of entering in the temple and was frequently found. Now. John, John, uh, James's earthly brother wasn't Levite, and the part, the part that I'm talking about here, though, he was holy from his mother's womb. So, when James, when Jesus sees James, his earthly brother, and that's the guy who wants him to be killed, that's a holy man. That's that's a man of God. 
Well, John the Baptist want that to do that? Now he's describing him. He's describing this guy as if he was John the Baptist. Would John the Baptist want Jesus to be killed? Come on, holy from his mother's womb. Well, his mother's his mother was Mary, so that's maybe that's where they get it from. Mary, who was mentioned second. Mary, who he says, my mother are these. He's. He's got women, you know, that could be his mother sitting about learning of him. Is his mother sitting about learning of him? Well, why, why was she coming? You know, this whole thing about earth, you know, the children of men think like this. That's how they think. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, statues, saints, pray to the saints, holy father. He says, call no man your father. Who's the holy father? Papa. Popa, what do you think that is? He's going to be the chief of the false prophets, that guy. The beast that rises from the, from the earth. I have a, a video on the beast that rises from the earth, and it points out the roots, going back to Daniel, who the roots of that false prophet is. And it looks to me, in every shape and way, to be the Roman Catholic Church. So this, 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 these guys here that are writing this and exalting James the earthly brother are men that think like that. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Joseph, you know, hey, come on. He's only mentioned that he was the father. He was the earthly father, the stepfather. He was a righteous man. He wanted to put her away. She, she didn't do any sin there. But he was holy from his mother's womb. And then he describes him as John the ba like a John the Baptist type, which is a Levite. John the Baptist was a Levite. His father, Zacharias, was a minister of the temple. So again, their proof is outside the box. Sometimes you have to think inside the box, if the box is the holy book, Bible, the truth. Where the truth, you know the truth. Where you know it's the truth. There's no guessing about Paul, who became an apostle after. And there's, 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 there's a, a respect, again, a respect for that office. You don't bypass James of Alphaeus when James, when, when uh, you need somebody to replace James of Zebedee, and you give it to another James. The, this guy who wasn't even there, who didn't believe, who really never saw too many miracles because he was in the town that didn't believe him. But he becomes a man. He sees the resurrection. How do you know? And this, these are the kinds of, of, uh, of uh, proof that you get. And, and he was in the habit of entering alone into the temple and was frequently found upon his knees begging forgiveness for the people so that his knees became hard like those of a camel. Oh, come on. Really? You know, again... You gotta, you you got this doctrine here, and you gotta measure it up to the to the truth. Now we we're privileged. We have the entire sixty six books of that holy Bible. We got them. We're not in communist Russia where we're not even allowed to read it. By the grace of God, we have it now. Let's read it. Let's read it, people.